So why should you get prepared now for what's coming? Well, let's talk a little bit about a thing called wisdom. You've heard of this before. Certain people that you've come in contact with have wisdom in certain areas. Well, when it comes to money, the markets, economics, and cyclical patterns, wisdom is something that is very important because wisdom can only be created through a few different things. Number one, value. Number two, time, and sometimes lots of it. And number three, knowledge based on real life examples. So unless you have lots of time, unless you have somehow found the ability to get all the information from the past to derive at what we call wisdom, this video might be really impressive to you. Because it's all based on a very wise man by the name of Ray Dalio. Maybe you've heard of him, and if you haven't, maybe you should. Because he might be one of the smartest minds when it comes to money, and what's about to happen. Because I know that following wisdom always leads you to the source. And that's about what we are at. We are at the source of the next great financial meltdown. So that's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about how do you get prepared based on what Ray Dalio is teaching, what he's saying, and all the information that he has gathered through time, through failure, and through doing it. So folks, I hope you enjoy this video. My name's Chris Noggle. This is What Now, What's Next? So Ray Dalio, in a lot of his work, has come up with a very accurate picture of where we're at right now, financially, economically, and globally. And he's also derived a really clear picture of where we're going next. But you probably might be asking yourself, uh, who is this Ray Dalio guy? So let me just give you some of the stats. First off, he's a billionaire. Ah, no big deal, there's lots of billionaires. He was the founder of the largest hedge fund in the world. They manage money for countries, not just individuals. That's right, and not only that, he's got an impeccable track history. He's written many, many books on these subjects, but he also he has gone way back in the history books to study different cycles from different times and then parlayed them over to what's happening right now. And I think that's one of the most important things you should learn about. Now, let's go here. He's got a couple really fun videos that he's done and I'd like to put a little link up down below so you can watch these because you might want a little more info than what I'm going to do in this video. The first one is called Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order. It's about a 28 minute long video and it'll really give you a clear picture of exactly that, principles to deal with the changing world order. The second video he did was my favorite and it's called How the Economic Machine Works. So we'll put both those links below so you can check them out. But let's just dive into this. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about what's going on right now because maybe you're one of the folks that have been living under a rock and you just pretend that nothing's wrong. Seems like everything's fine. I'm still getting a paycheck. Yep, everything's still going good. Doesn't seem like we're in a recession or headed to a recession, but you know what? The cycles, the data, and the signs all point to a different place. Let's just start with one. It's called the inverted yield curve. Now I'm not gonna fully explain this, but it just happens when the short-term US Treasury bonds, which are IOUs the US government sells, so the short-term US Treasury bonds, typically two years, okay, that would be short-term, they pay a higher interest rate than longer-term US Treasury bonds, like 30-year or 10-year US Treasury bonds. So think about that. If you were gonna give me money for two years, you would probably logically think that the interest rate I pay you would be lower than if you gave me money for 10 years. Because if you gave me money for 10 years, you'd probably want a higher interest rate, right? Or what if you gave me money for 30 years, you'd want a much higher interest rate. Well, that just logically makes sense. But you see what the inverted yield curve says is it says right now, you get paid a higher interest rate for buying those short-term two-year bonds than you do for buying the longer-term 10-year bonds. That is backwards. You can see I spelled it out for you. Now you gotta be in a mirror to see that. And here's the funny thing. You're probably like, oh, what the heck does that have to do with me? Well, it has everything to do with you because this inverted yield curve has happened seven times in the last 50 years. Seven times since World War II. 
And every single time, all seven, 100% of the time, it has ended in a recession. Not one time out of seven, not six out of seven, 100% of the time. So if that doesn't wake you up to let you know that we will be in a recession based on just that simple thing. But some of you are like, well, this time is gonna be different. Okay, great. Let me explain to you market cycles. And these are straight out of Ray Dalio's teachings. Market cycles, there's essentially three different cycles. There's a buy cycle, a sell cycle, and a panic cycle. So if we really visually look at these different cycles, you all know what they are. The sell cycle is also called the fear cycle because you're, you're scared. You fear what's coming, you fear what's happening. So therefore, you sell. The buy cycle is represented by the nice lineup, which you've had the luxury of being part of for about the last 12 years. The longest bull run in history outside of 2022 and this year, 2023, which we have entered the sell cycle. And then the panic cycle is really about right here. But let's quantify these three different cycles, shall we? The buy cycle is when you're feeling optimistic, okay? You can relate to that. You've probably felt optimistic the last few years. Business has been good if you're a business owner. You've been getting raises. Things are going good. You probably upgraded your car, maybe even upgraded your house. You're optimistic. You're not only optimistic, you're excited. You're thrilled. You've got emotions running wild. They're really, really high emotions. There's a sense of euphoria because everything's going up. You feel like you can't get it wrong. And a matter of fact, if you're 36 years or younger, you have never even seen the next cycle, which is the sell cycle. You only know this buy cycle. Good for you. That's terrible because you are about to enter a cycle you have no knowledge or no comprehension of. Hmm, I sense no danger. And let me just explain what the sell cycle is. Remember the sell is represented by the red line going down and we know that's not good. It's filled with anxiety. It's filled with fear and denial. Capitulation, depression, despondency. All of these characteristics come along with the cycle we are entering right now. There's four different pains that every single one of you watching this suffer from. Maybe not all four, hopefully not all four, but one of these are a pain you suffer from. Time, there's not enough of it. Energy, you put energy in the wrong places. You don't know where to spend your energy. Money the number one cause for divorce in this country and stress. Those are the pains. If you just listen to the words I'm gonna tell you in this video, you can solve some of these pains because being prepared and getting ready for what's about to happen will alleviate you from losing out on time. It will alleviate you from spending energy in the wrong places, which is usually that energy spent on stressing out and it will alleviate you from having to follow this fear cycle, this sell cycle too much further. And all of this comes from Ray Dalio's teachings. So let me show you some basic fundamentals of what Ray Dalio teaches. The first thing Ray Dalio teaches is he teaches about the debt cycles. There are three different debt cycles, two of which most of you on here have witnessed. Number one, productivity. You are all part of the economic machine and what's called productivity. When you go to work, when you go to your business and you create things, you are participating in rising productivity. The harder you work, the more goods and services you create, the more productivity growth we have. Now that's great for the buy cycle, but as we enter the sell cycle, productivity drops and we'll cover that, but you all understand that. You all mostly understand the short-term debt cycle because as productivity goes up, in this economic world that we live in, in this global economy, that's just part of it all. We have circumvented the normal productivity growth of us working harder and producing and creating more goods and services with debt. We borrow money so that we then can increase productivity at a faster pace, but because of this borrowing, we created a short-term debt cycle. Highs and lows. Every five to seven years, there are highs and lows because of the short-term debt cycle. More productivity, more debt, then we hit a peak, we enter a sell cycle, a recessionary or de deflationary period, and everything cools down, and then it starts over again, and, it, and you've been through these. Okay, so just do the math. 
2008, the Great Recession, right up to the pandemic. Do the math, short-term debt cycle. Okay, the dot-com crash in the 2000s, up to the 2008 Great Recession, five to seven year cycle. The last cycle that Ray Dalio talks about and then I'm gonna to talk to you about is one you've never seen. Matter of fact, actually, some of you may have, but you would have had to have lived through the Great Depression to see this. So anyone watching this, uh, any of you been around since 1933? I didn't think so. So therefore, it's very safe to say that none of you know what this means. The long-term debt cycle is a combination of productivity and short-term debt cycles, but it isn't a long-term debt cycle. So when we do that, let's just look here at the larger chart. It is a 50 to 75 year cycle. And there are other cycles that are feeding into what's about to happen, like the technology cycle, which is a 45 year cycle. But again, I don't wanna bore you, but as you can see, from 1933, right up to where we're at now, marked by the X, we have accumulated more and more debt. If you don't believe me, just look at the US government. Do any studies with that, we do lots of this. And how much debt did they have right after the Great Depression? And then how did it go? Did it go down? No, it only went up. And households, American households in 1930s and 1950s, they had very little debt. Today, they have a lot of debt and climbing at rapid rates. The debt per American household is the highest that it's ever been. Matter of fact, the credit card debt in American households increased double digits just from last year. Probably because people wanna maintain a lifestyle that they can't maintain on their normal productivity, their income. So what did they do? They layered debt on. And unfortunately, credit cards are pretty easy to get now, so we layer credit card debts. And that is where the problem starts. But it's not just you and your and other American households, it's governments. I don't care if it's the US or China or India or Russia, for any matter, all governments have increased their debt. The US right now is at about a, a little over 120% of their GDP. So GDP is productivity, it's gross domestic product. Our debt exceeds GDP at a rate of about 120 plus percent. There has been studies that say that once you exceed 70% of debt to GDP, it's over. And we're at 120 and climbing. Folks, do you understand what I'm saying? Maybe go back and watch that Ray Dalio video. That one about the changing world order is really important. But this is a 50 to 75 year cycle and X marks the spot. Well, have any of you ever ridden that roller coaster, the one with the really big drop and you know, you're kind of climbing, you're climbing, you're smiling, you're laughing. And then all of a sudden you get to the top and you start hearing that chink, 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 chink. And then you hear screams up ahead because you're probably not in the front seat. Those screams are the people going over that top. And then all of a sudden, there you are. For some of you, it's exhilarating. For some of you, you throw up. For some of you, you close your eyes. It doesn't matter who you are. You're just at a different stage and a different risk tolerance. Some of those that are screaming in excitement, they knew it was coming. They prepared for that big drop on the roller coaster. It's exciting. It's an opportunity for them. For others, they're scared out of their mind. That's why they puke. Have you, any of you ever been on a roller coaster? Let's be honest with yourself. And someone up front puked and you wore it? I'm lucky I haven't, but I'm sure someone on here has. That's where we're going, but that's where we're going with the economy. And that's where we're going with your investment accounts. Yes, your 401ks and all those. This is the deleveraging period. This is where we are at. There is nothing that will change this. There is nothing you can do to solve this problem. There's nothing the government will do. There's nothing the Fed will do. The Fed has already said that they're gonna continue raising interest rates. They're not gonna drop interest rates because we're going down the wrong side. They gotta get a hold of the inflation that they created. Anyway, get off my soapbox. When we go into this deleveraging, that roller coaster ride down, prices of all things will go down. The price of your house will decrease. The price of your stocks and your mutual funds and your ETFs will go down. Sorry, it is a cycle and there's nothing you can do about it except for prepare. So if you know it's coming, well, get off the damn roller coaster or don't get on it in the first place. Why would you wanna ride this roller coaster if you know it only goes down? I don't know. Only reason I could say you would want to ride a roller coaster over and over again and put yourself through that fear is because you understand it. Because it's an opportunity to you. Because as prices go down, who's gonna benefit? 
the people that were prepared, the people that have the money in safe places that are are ready to buy the houses when people foreclose, like 2009, 10, 11, and 12. The people that want to buy the stocks when they're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% off from where they're at today, those are the people that benefit. This period of time, the deleveraging cycle will go two to three years. Oh, I know, and we haven't even really started. We still got another at least two years of this. So, tighten that seatbelt up, get yourself ready for it, because here we go. The next cycle, is right here. It's an inflationary cycle. The whole cycle from here to here is seven to 10 years. So mark the calendar. This whole roller coaster ride is gonna take about seven total years. Could go as long as 10. It's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna be fun. But it could be the biggest opportunity in your life if you stop listening to other people tell you to follow them off the cliff. If you stop following the herds that are going into the market when smart money's moving out of the market, you'd be a lot better off. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, why is it that when you buy stocks, it's when everything's going up? You love that cycle. You felt good about it. Don't lie. Were you buying stocks when everything was rosy and good and they were all going up and it felt like, oh my God, this is never gonna end. Did you buy Bitcoin when it was 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars when it just seemed like it was never gonna end? It was just gonna go to the moon until it went down to 14 thousand? Until your famous fang stocks, Facebook, well, now Meta, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, they're all down over 20% or more. But I bet you were buying them when they were going up, but I bet you now you're not buying them because you're scared. You see, Warren Buffett says, be greedy when others are fearful. And be fearful when others are greedy. This rise back up will happen. It might be in five to seven years, who knows? You're gonna have to wait for that. And you're gonna have to stop believing Pinocchio in his lies. And here's how the lies are. It's called an average rate of return. Oh, it's okay. You're, this is you know the Wall Street people and the, the financial advisors like I used to be. It's okay, it's just a paper loss. How's that paper loss feeling now? What if it goes double down? How's it gonna feel then? Not gonna feel like a paper loss. You're gonna watch your portfolio go from whatever it is to half. That does not feel good. And that stimulates your fear mechanisms and you more than likely will sell because I can't handle it, I can't take it anymore. And you sell at the absolute wrong time. But your advisor said, you're in it for the long haul. Let me just give you a picture. If you lose 30%, if you lose 30% in your portfolio, you have to make 43% back just to make the 30 back that you lost. If you lose 40%, you gotta make 63% back just to make up the 40 that you lost. And if you do, unfortunately, lose 50%, you gotta make 100% to get back to 50 that you lost. Are you ready for that? Do you wanna deal with that? I hope your answer is no. You need to pay attention to Ray Dalio. And let me just read you just a couple stats here. A country gains power when it encounters favorable economic and social conditions that enable the development of its economy and its military. I hope you understand that because that's the cycles that we've gone through up to this point. We have had tremendous gains. We have had incredible technology gains and technology advancements. And we, we've gone through so many of these really good times. This country directs the world order once it becomes more powerful than all other countries shown by winning a war, World War II. Folks, I hope by now you think you understand I'm talking about the United States of America. Matter of fact, these are Ray Dalio's words. Once a country peaks, the population gets lazy. United States, lazy. Yes, during the pandemic, nobody wanted to go to work. Mom and pop shops couldn't even find people. Even today, there's two jobs for every one unemployed person. Lazy. It borrows money instead of working hard. 120% of GDP in debt. Our government just borrows. And so are most of you. The country loses its economic and military edge. China's been creeping up militarily and economically. The shift from one world order to another happens when a new rising power becomes stronger than the decaying one. I hate to say this, but this is 2023, and I think as of today, 
our military has shot down four unidentified floating objects. Well, if you've been paying attention and if you have any kind of logic, China, they're Chinese balloons spying on us. It's all over the news, it's all over social media. Maybe you should be paying attention a little bit more. The decaying power often engages and loses a war against the rising power and the whole cycle starts again. Folks, this isn't something to be scared of, but we've been through wars before. We won the last war. Will we win the next one? I hope, I hope so. I hope we never have another war, but unfortunately economic cycles and what I just read you and what Ray Dalio will show you in his videos will tell a different story. All I'm trying to do folks is get you to be prepared, get you to get your house in order and to get you on the right side of this economic fallout, this collapse, this deleveraging period that we're about to enter because it could be the greatest opportunity of your life if you choose. I hope you enjoy this. Make sure you follow my channel. Right down at the bottom, click that YouTube link. Yep, right there, subscribe. And then click that little bell at the top, the one that says, you know, alerts, because that will notify you every time I put a new video out because I want to get you prepared. And I think you owe it to your family to be prepared. My name's Chris Noggle and this is What Now, What's Next? We'll see you on the next one.